Hey guys, it's Alex C with TFP TV, and I wanted to make a quick video discussing my favorite series for TFP TV, and that is of course the Run and Gun series. For those unfamiliar, the Run and Gun videos are a series where I shoot 25 or 30 rounds at a target standing at about 80 yards and advancing while I reload twice for self-loaders and four times for manually operated firearms. It's a very fun series and I really enjoy putting old bolt-action rifles to the test. You find out much more about the rifle you're behind when you eschew the shooting bench and rifle rest and try to shoot the gun with some haste. But really there are a few reasons why we do it. First, it's an affordable and quick way to showcase a rifle in action. Firing 25 or 30 rounds is pretty easy on our budget and frees up ammo for when we do actually want to review the rifle more in depth. If we use a box and a half worth of, say, 6.5 Carcano, then that frees up the ammo for when we actually want to do a shooting review. This way we really get the most out of what we have. Second, I think the series is a pretty decent way to compare rifles against each other. The way we do run and guns is we take out a bunch of rifles, fire a few rounds to make sure that the gun works and is sighted in properly, and then we just kind of go for it Top Gear style. Also without Clarkson and Mayan Hammond that isn't really Top Gear. Anyways, this way I'm confronted with the quirks and nuances of the rifle rather bluntly. But that isn't to say I'm unfamiliar with the guns entirely. In fact, I generally have shot most, if not all, from a static position at some point. But of course, a rifle's performance from a bench is not indicative of its success under stress or loading with haste. Which leads me to my next point. The Run and Gun series has uncovered some quirks and things about rifles I would have probably never found out about otherwise. For example, on the Moss 4956, we found that it's really tricky to load with stripper clips. While the guns were designed with detachable mags in mind, I figured that stripper clips paired with the guide would be just fine. And I was wrong. We've also found out things like not all stripper clips are created equal. Loading with man liquor in block clips is incredibly fast. Bolt actions are faster and more capable than I originally thought. And guns that they say can't get rimlock can get rimlock. Lastly, I do the series because I really enjoy it. It's fun and interesting to put an old bolt action to the test, and I like getting behind them. Trying to reload with stripper clips, move, shoot, and maintain accuracy is a lot harder than it looks. And it's fair to say that I've improved a lot over the course of the series. While the ability to reload with stripper clips or shoot a bolt action quickly isn't really a relevant skill these days, unless you're a Norwegian participating in stank skating, I guess, it's nonetheless really interesting to see which rifles were the most user-friendly from a historical perspective. So the Run and Gun series is a fun way to compare old rifles against one another with a modern offering or two peppered in every so often. And so I've made a spreadsheet consisting of every firearm we've ever used for it, complete with times and number of hits, divided into single shots, manually operated rifles, and self-loaders. You can see it by hitting the link in the description, but please take it at face value. It's a sample size of one rifle shot by one guy doing one run who is a remarkably average shooter. It isn't some kind of definitive list to be used to prove to your buddy that your rifle is better than his, unless you have a Moss 36 and he doesn't. Just kidding. Not really. Anyways, we do have more run and gun videos coming up soon as the series was delayed for a while due to weather, but it should resume in the next couple weeks. Also, we will eventually work in more modern guns, but really we would like to get through as much of the vintage stuff as possible first. We're also working on a way to integrate pistols and shotguns, which we should have up and running in the next few months. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see you next time.